uh, just delivering three days a week because they just they weren't making enough money. And uh, out of the blue, what do you think saved them? Emily. Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> COVID. Amazon. Amazon came about and people were getting started to use mail again. They needed to use mail. In fact, it built up so much the post office couldn't keep up with it. And Amazon has built their own delivery trucks and delivery uh, franchises. And so people were investing in owning their own delivery franchises. So, you know, it seems like some industries have a way of, you know, overcoming the, the big hits that come to them. Um, that was by no means any pivot that the U.S. Post Office made. It just happened to be somebody else came out with a new idea that rescued it. But when you think about your startups, when you think or a new business, um, I always say, look at the big picture of it. Right. Look at your scalable model. How how much can you scale? You know, Nick is right too. you know, service is probably one of the biggest uh, climbing industries today. And when I go uh, lecture or uh, speak to students, I you know, I I have a bigger view of uh, some of the industries. But in technology, cybersecurity is one of the fastest growing industries in the world right now. Why? Because the, the crime is just horrendous. It's huge. So, you know, take a look at those things and how you could become a part of that industry without spending a lot of money. Um, you know, and again, Nick said, you know, yeah, there's not going to be jobs out there. So how can you become employable? And one of the best things I learned was very young in my career. Uh, the uh, the landscape changed in the um, technology industry. And when I got into it, um, it was very good to be in it, right? The money was really good. And all of a sudden, the companies got this idea of, hey, we're going to start laying everybody off. You know, we're going to we're going to lay people off. We're going to. Um, and that's how they drove their profit up. Right. They would have like, um, you know, several months where they're generating income, generating income. And near the end of the year, they would just lay everybody off. You know, 10,000 people. Boom. Their P&L report jumped up. Why? Because they had more out, outgo, you know, money. They had income reported, but no outgo. And then a month or two later, they would hire these people back. That was the best thing that ever happened to me, even though I was very upset when I got hit in one of those layoffs because I learned something very valuable. Back then they had outplacement centers and you would go to them. I took advantage of it. I, like you are doing, you're, you're here. You're taking advantage of this time. I took advantage of that and I went to every session they had, every class they had. And I learned something very valuable about myself that nobody ever taught me. I have this. And I have this and nobody can take that away from me. That's the most valuable intellectual property we own. And we graduate with that because you, you went to college. That was a lot of persistence. That was a lot of this and this is something nobody can take away from you or anybody else can take from you. This is your intellectual property. And if you have these two things and you keep persistent and you don't ever give up, my favorite saying, speech from Jimmy Valvano, don't give up, don't ever give up, execute with excellence. People always keep coming back to you. They'll, you know, and, and because it shows reliable, be reliable. Something Ann Kid and I learned um, about starting uh, the TV show. When you're reliably there every day, people start following you. They start watching you and they start listening. So always be reliable. And, and these things are just, you would think they were common sense, but I'm finding out it's not just like we have startup Wednesdays and nobody shows up. <laughs> Nick and I, we finally gave up on startups and I'm going to show you, this is a true story. Nick and Nick and I invested a lot of money with IBM to do a uh, startup series at CES. We rented a mansion. We uh, called in all the venture capitalists. It was almost it was so, uh, such a sad story. But what we were building was beautiful. We, we had this mansion. We had beautiful views and rooms where we can interview people, bring them in. We had venture capitalists fly in from all over the country, maybe all over the world. And we had um, decided not to overwhelm ourselves with a lot of startups. I thought all these startups right there at CES would just flow in. I thought they would just be overwhelming. I think we had over 20 confirmed. Could not. I, I was so excited. And I get get there and not only two startups showed up. 
in a three-day filming session where we had a whole crew there. And now you have to know, understand in the TV world, having a crew on site is a thousand dollars a minute. A thousand dollars a minute. And Nick and I, our minds are, this is how our minds work. One thousand dollars, two thousand, every minute our brain is counting how much just flushed down the toilet. Now that's not even going to air, right? So we're not getting any content. And fortunately we had all these venture cap capitalists there. I decided to pivot hard and go, you know what? Let's just go back to money masters and do some great interviews. And that's what we did. We did some great interviews, but I'm going to share with you um, three of the, the venture capitalists that were there. I'm going to share a video of uh, three of them that showed up. Uh, it ended up being just a really good short take of three guys telling you what it takes to become successful like them. And I think you'll enjoy this being startups as all of you are and respect. Um, uh, which one is it? Let's see. I got a bunch of them here. Here we go. Can you see it? Yeah. Yep. All right. So do any of you know who these guys are? Napster and uh, the two more. All right. So John Fanning, who's founder of Napster um, and a uh, principal founder of Uber. A lot of people don't know that a founding father of Uber. Um, Manny Fernandez, who is, uh, who wants to be a millionaire TV show, but a self-made millionaire. His story's quite interesting. If you can get the, the, he tells several stories. It's kind of funny. And then this is Jason, excuse me. I pulled a, a freshman. Um, and he is the founder of Net Capital, which is, uh, one of the first, um, online crowdsourced funding for equity. They came out and, and uh, actually John Fanning is a um, uh, investor in that company as well. But let's play their video while they're sitting around bored at our event. And here we go. <laughs> And it doesn't go well, you don't get a deal, you don't get a term sheet. That doesn't mean that it's over. Just having that conversation and having that relationship is positive. And maybe the next time or later down the road, you come back with momentum. Someone like that might come to us even a couple of years later. And we know her and we're impressed with her. Yeah. And we want to give her and empower her the opportunity to do her next startup. I think a lot about pitching entrepreneurship is like, oh. and then for a moment, I had this small robot in the middle of the And I turn it on and it went hit the wall. But it was smart enough to not to get the wall and to get another wall. And then it was smart enough, kind of like artificial intelligence, to not hit that wall and it turned around and it found a way out. And I'm telling you, that's what entrepreneurship is about. Being persistent, you hit a wall, to get over that wall, through the wall, around the wall, but you keep going because you learn by each time. Just like this. I'm going to learn by doing this too. At least with God's speaks. <laughs> So uh, the music's a little loud. I'd like to get that toned down just a little bit. But, um, you know, three great guys who um, actually we had a bunch more. There's more videos of, of other entrepreneurs. Uh, the video cameraman that I had, we had two a, a crew there, which was the worst crew I ever worked with in my life. And then, of course, we had Francisco who came and rescued the day. He has always been um, probably one of my favorite uh, photographers and videographers. And he happened to show up and he um, got a lot of these short takes for me. He thinks like me. We, we've worked together a lot. And he goes, you know, what? I'm not going to let this day go to waste. I'm going to just get out there and get as many interviews with you. Um, we actually went out and got an interview with the Prince of Netherlands. That was my first interview with the Prince of Netherlands. So, you know, thanks to somebody who uh, was thinking on his toes with me, we were able to get a lot of these great interviews, but we had Brock Felt who flew in. We had um, all kinds of venture capitalists. Uh, the the uh, general manager of IBM from France. Are, are, you, are you talking about the disaster in Las Vegas? Well, I just, shared, <laughs> you just missed it, Nick. I just shared the video uh, take of the three uh, musketeers, as we call them. Oh, those guys. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, the thing is, if, if you think about who we had there, Josh Friedman, who um, actually is the CEO and founder of Net Capital, okay, which has raised billions of dollars for startups. We had um, 
you know, a Sentai millionaire founder of Napster. We had the head of uh, IBM IoT. We had Manny Fernandez on CNBC who wants to be a millionaire. And we got blown off by 18 of 20 oh, stars. And, and we also had Brock Felt. Yeah, Brock Felt mm -hmm. from, uh, yeah, Silicon. And, no, it's called uh, Star, uh, Salt Lake St uh, Venture Capital. Or yeah, whatever. Salt Startup. Lake Venture Capital. He, he, he's mm -hmm. raised about $500 million. I mean, so when you look in the room, when you look at the room, literally you had billions of dollars, okay, in the room. And guess what happens? You get blown off by the start. Oh, we also had the guy. Who are you? IBM. What do you do? Who are these guys? How's this going to happen? Oh, Johnny just showed up to my booth. I can't make it. Seriously. Johnny showed up to my booth. I can't make it, so I'm going to blow off the, you know, the head of IBM, IoT. I'm going to blow off the guy who's the it, it, because of Johnny. I mean, the the, the forget it. I mean, the, the, what do these people used to think with? And so the failure rate, ninety five percent, and and part of it is just I hate to say it, it's the attitude um, that startups have. So so Kim, I was thinking about this because I had to go do some car work. Hey Nick, yeah, Mark. These people. yeah, Mark. People Let's still think that way though. though. Because I was actually thinking about that. Um, I got a friend of mine that uh, actually one of the founders of Black Wall Street. There's an uh, event that goes on every uh, year. They're actually taking a break to do some reorganizing. But they had folks that were regularly getting there. They would venture capital in a lot of different uh, businesses. But I'm oftentimes shocked at the amount of people that when they're given this opportunity, don't uh, feel that it's a real opportunity. I know that oh, you're talking no, about there's that. No, no, Even no when question. you came out no, no. and everything, they feel that it's oh, uh, something that's you know, doubtful well, when, and things of that nature. So I'm oftentimes shocked at that. It's been going on for decades. I had a oh, friend who was a oh. filmmaker, and he actually hired a top lawyer in Raleigh, uh, approached a lot of uh, people that with capital. I mean, they, it's known fact that they have capitals, whether they're doctors, lawyers, or Indian chiefs, but they've got capital. And we reached out to uh, several of them, me and some friends of mine that are also friends of his. We had tons of folks that said, we're going to be there, we're going to be there, we're going to be there. We went to their office, which is a nice office in Raleigh. I think they still have that office. It's a major law firm. Um, I can't yeah. remember the name right now. Sure. Um, and even back to it, I don't know that they want to <laughs> this particular kind of publicity. But uh, we all gathered in their top building, and uh, we were sitting up there in a nice conference room. And we were expecting this folks to come and hear a pitch for a film, a film that could actually have mm -hmm. done quite well in our opinion. But right. uh, and all they had to do was hear the pitch. And sure. all these people that promised us that they were going to come, Blew nobody off. showed up. I think I, I remember Blew looking off. out the car, um, looking out the uh, top side of the window, and I'm sitting there. I think I saw one of them drive by, and you know what happened? They didn't see enough cars, so they kept on driving. Sure, right. Yeah, yeah. you get you get blown off a lot. You know, Mark, when it comes to, like, startups, and so we're doing startups here and podcast on Thursday, right? So I'm, I made a mistake. Sometimes it's how you, you present yourself, and it, it makes a mistake. So right now I said IBM TV, a not-for-profit enterprise, okay? And then I put in so something else that, you know, uh, a network for you guys and all that stuff. But if I don't do that, the first thing that comes back on podcasters is scam. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, every, everything everything out there is a bloody scam. And I'm going like, wait a minute. Like scam, I said, it's not just the scam the, uh, is up here, buddy. The scam is up the business here. Folks, it's everybody that automatically wants to put that kind of mindset in. Like I said, Jess right. is a uh, Major business leader. She's worked with um, American mm -hmm. She's worked with the um, CBS, uh, one of the network affiliates here, the people that run American Tobacco. So oh, yeah. she's worked with them for a number of years and she's part of the leadership oh. council. So yeah, yeah, like yeah, I said, I've seen her get blown off on a lot of things. I mean, oh, not no, all the time. I, well, like I said, I, 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 I was used to having the door slammed in my face when we we're at the, the NAPTI conference in Miami. Okay, it was the National Association of Professional Television Executives. Now we hung out with Lou Martin, who passed away, but he was the founder of NAPSTI. So I'm hanging out with him most of the conference. But every now and then when I went to visit at the booth and i'll never forget maybe it was facebook or youtube i forget which one it was and they go do you, do you oh we're with ibm tv do you have an appointment nope um well we're not going to see you have a good day click i mean it's like i, I said we're not going to be able to talk no you don't have an appointment and i said you know ibm's a pretty big company well you don't have an appointment click have a good day I'm going, like, God, are you kidding me so so i, I was i was kind of used to and by the way this is in media i don't know if you you guys uh, i don't come from the media world okay so but what, what i did found about media 
is that it's highly controlled, next to impossible to navigate through. And this is the reason, part of the reason we started IBM TV. We're going like, wait a minute, we don't have to kowtow to you guys because we can go direct worldwide through the World Wide Web to 4.3 billion people. What do I need CBS for? I mean, it's on the other channel, I can watch it, but um, we don't need your networks anymore. The, the internet has changed that. And, and, and even IBM has come up with a new program called IBS TV or something like that. Anyway, what it does, it actually takes all your content. And we're gonna have to look into this. It takes all your content using artificial intelligence and then delivers the type of content that you actually want. Um, it's a new program, meaning it's about a year old by IBM, and it's pretty cool because one problem you have with YouTube and any content is, and Netflix, all of them, is that they have so much content, and you want to listen to this particular content, how do you synthesize through it and make sure that your viewers listen to this particular content? So really what's happening is the IT, uh, I believe what's going to happen is uh, OTT programming, and by the way, NAPTI believes it, this OTT programming like we're doing IBM TV is going to make big inroads into traditional media. The traditional media model uh, that has a stranglehold of, of markets are going to find themselves breaking down uh you know and so i'm saying well they're gonna have a real problem uh and, and podcasters okay yeah mark get your podcast on cbs show me what century that's gonna happen okay it is yeah that will never happen just like uh no like i have many friends that are oh. entrepreneurs and uh they're not gonna have a good yeah. time getting into some of the major corporations they just oh, need yeah. to concentrate on their own field and develop their own field rather than trying to because uh, I even on the even on the entrepreneurial side, there's going to be a lot of breakdown because of what's going on in the world. I just read an article earlier today that I think a couple of the major chains are getting ready to fold here in America. Oh, really? Yeah, some of the major major chains are going to going to fold here. Oh, yeah. I mean, j yeah. Just because you're a um, a major chain doesn't mean you necessarily have a. Um, well, I think J Crew f filed for bankruptcy already which is it was a big distributor because just because you're a major chain doesn't mean you have a free pass and you know what's also going to happen mark okay because we've been doing startup wednesday with unemployment high 14.7 percent going up in the united states are going to be more startups or less what's your thoughts well i think there's definitely going to be more people doing startups i think a lot of people are sitting at home right now that have had business and business thoughts so i think that they're going to start trying to do more of those uh, and they'll try to actually do the education that they need uh, in order to get those things rolling. I mean, one of the things that I feel is going on is we don't have enough people actually uh, developing the plan in order for business. Um, they come to the business, but they don't necessarily have a good business plan or a good plan of action. And that's one of the things that I hope the new startups are gonna do is actually have a solid plan when they come together. I mean, I'll give an example and it actually comes out of the world of entertainment. But I've got a good friend of mine, uh, Ray Pascal. He was the um, uh, person that did the renting for, uh, so if you wanted to do an event at the Carolina Theater, you would go to Ray. And Ray said that he had tons of folks who would come to him and have these great ideas of all kinds of shows, everything from Latin music shows to rock and roll to country to blues to jazz to soul, you name a John. I mean, I could, there was probably people that approached him about trying to do some shows that were uh, Indian and Asian based. But his one thing that he always says, he still says to this day because we're very good friends, is everybody's a promoter until this time to the check. And then they're no longer a promoter because they don't have the resources to do it. So that's yeah. what he was always getting frustrated by. But these people would have some tremendous ideas. And then when he asked them, all right, uh, you know, it's going to cost you X, Y, and Z. And it's the Carolina Theater. It's a thousand seater. So it's not going to cost them like going to the uh, Deep Pack or going to right. Walnut Creek or some of the more major venues. But it also wasn't going to be incredibly cheap either. Right. So, I mean, we're probably talking, you know, a few thousand dollars or something like that in order to successfully do it. It was a big hall, the thousand theater, maybe somewhere right. in the range of 10 or something like that. So sure. still something that was manageable. But, you know, if folks don't have that in there, uh, disposable Budget. income. It's not all manageable. So I just thought he got frustrated with that a couple of times because he's sitting there with all these plans and ideas. But when I asked them, you know, how are you going to execute it? That's where it becomes problematic. And I find that with a lot of owners, they've got 
these great ideas. I know I had Ron Thomas on the podcast sometime back. He's a uh, human resource person that is from the uh, states, many of the United States, but he's now based in Dubai and he has his own uh, human resource company. And he was talking about that as well. He was talking about how he got really frustrated when folks would uh, come to him with a business plan, including some relatives. You know how your relatives are always going to come at you with something or another, but they didn't really have a concrete plan. But uh, he actually also had a very interesting story that I uh, shared, I think, with Kimberly uh, on one of our calls, or it might have been on the past one of these shows. But he was the gentleman that, um, after he retired, he retired from Arthur Stewart and a lot of the high-powered companies that are here in the United States. So after he retired, he wanted to get into the uh, speaking circuit. And, you know, a lot of people would go in that from a position yeah. of so what some people would consider weakness. They would go there and, like, I've done X, Y, and Z, hire me. He actually went from a position of power, and folks might want to think about this when they're approaching folks. What he did is he actually went to several conferences, and he said, look, this is my background. This is what I have done. Now, if uh, we know that how conferences work, there's a good possibility that somebody's going to drop out of this conference. You see that I've got the background, and you see that I've got the knowledge. So if somebody drops out of this conference, I want you to reach out to me. You see where that's totally taking it to a different kind of twist and everything. And he said that he sent out like maybe about, I want to say somewhere between seven and 10 of those kind of uh, cold calls. And within, uh, before, I think he did it like on Friday and before the weekend was out, he had already been contacted by, I think six of the seven or something like that, that had said, yeah, you're right. So-and-so dropped out. I need to have you come in here and do this speaking. And this was around the world. So he had six global or something around that in nature, six or so global conferences they were paying him some pretty good money. I mean, Nick, you, well, no, no, no. Actually, you know they actually, get paid pretty good money. Yeah, and that was actually a pretty good return because when you do mailers, and this is what people don't know about marketing because the marketing classes you take in business school, and I, I, I got an MBA years ago, and it's so la-la land that it's not re- reality. Uh, they've never marketed. But seriously, if you send a mailer, send people a mail, that your response rate is like one quarter of 1%. So if you send a thousand, you may get, you may get four responses. And I had tested that for years, decades on mailers, because we did them recognizing our response rate would be about a quarter of 1%. So you have to think in terms, this is the magic of thinking big. When you send mailers out, you send 15,000 to 35,000 to get any response. And people don't know that, that you have to, to, to do massive amount of advertising just to get a little response in uh, most market spaces. And, and that's the way it is. Now, IBM TV, we're, we're structured a little different because we are international. Like on this call, call, Mark, you're the only one besides me in the United States. Ankit is beaming in from India. Uh, Willie Hill is beaming in from Australia. Raina's beaming in from Malaysia, and Alexander Starr's in Canada. So, uh, so, so the thing is, one one problem with our marketing that we have is that some of our people that come on, their message may be only particular to that country rather than worldwide. But the other problem is we don't think worldwide, at least in the United States. Okay, in other words, uh, we don't think like when Raina came in from Malaysia. I was going, how much do I know about Malaysia? You know, next to nothing, because uh, what sh- what television show, Mark, have you seen recently that features Malaysia? Can't think of a show from Malaysia. The, like I said, <laughs> I cannot you. think of one that's got a Malaysia you, twist to it. You. So you're gonna have to tell me uh, where, 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 is, where in the, the world is Malaysia? Talking? Where in the world is Malaysia? <laughs> in the United States, who knows? If we well, I want to know the popular TV show in Malaysia. Go on the top. Well, what, what I want to do with, with Raina is get a, a special show just on Malaysia because yeah. we, we do not have, uh, I mean, when he showed up from Malaysia, I'm going, okay, where's that? I still have to go look on a map to find out where it is. But apparently they have 30 million people. I mean, it's bigger than the state of California, you know, uh, probably bigger than Canada. Oh, you know where Malaysia is. Alexander. No, right? actually, the interesting thing about <laughs> Malaysia is um, I actually had an interesting experience with Malaysia, and it was actually involving media, something like this, but it was a totally different kind of format. There was a um, young lady who may or may not have been involved in the uh, modeling and entertainment industry of London. It was a little sketchy whether she was or wasn't, but she actually 
got together and she saw a lot of folks that were bored, and I do mean bored, with uh, their evenings. So she actually reached out to folks and basically created almost like an internet version of a nightclub meaning that somebody played the role of the DJ. I did that once or twice along with a real DJ who was from Thailand and mm -hmm. was also people from around the world. There was a couple of you from LA. So these were folks that were sitting around making requests of the music, playing the role of bartender, playing the role of whatever you would see in a normal nightclub. And I want to say two of the young ladies that were on that call were from Malaysia. Oh, okay. okay. I, I found okay, it. Nice. It's on the map. It actually exists. Alexander, <laughs> what, do you, what do you got? Well, I want to tell you that I'm very upset at Malaysia, and I'll tell you why. Many years ago, I went with my wife. She was playing in Interzonal World Chess Championship in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, mm -hmm. and it was in July. So mm -hmm. we figured out that Malaysia is a very hot country. It's July, so we took very light clothes, and we went there, and the tournament was very long, almost a month long. And we were frozen there. What we didn't realize is that we were playing in Genting Highlands. Oh, and, yeah. And it's very cold there. Yeah, and yeah. We I did understand. not know. And we were frozen. We were suffering there. And another problem was that the food was mostly Chinese. And finally, mm -hmm. when we flew and had stopped over in uh, Amsterdam, we just had a huge sandwiches with the cheese because we missed that food we never had for a month. A cheese sandwich. Okay. 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 Oh my okay. God. okay. 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 Uh, okay. But but in Malaysia actually there are a uh, different kind of restaurant. I don't know in what part actually you. I'm talking about Genting Highlands only. Genting oh. Highlands. There are oh, yeah, yeah, Chinese. Yeah. There are yes. casinos, hotels. It's a very nice place. Yes. Right? Yes. 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 I understand. Mm -hmm. If you stay in Kuala Lumpur, so in Kuala Lumpur, I think it's like uh, uh, like there are uh, Chinese, Indians, even uh, many many countries, even uh, Bukit Bintang. Uh, there are I many know. countries, restaurant and everything. So you 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 will be actually. I bought in Kuala Lumpur. There is there is a market uh, where I bought a uh, fake Rolex for twenty dollars, and it was worth okay. about two 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 and a half years. No problem. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Very good. Fake uh, watch I ever had. <laughs> okay, okay. Like example, I think you go for China market or something like that, and then maybe you you buy something like that, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Definitely. I'm trying to remember what Guadalajara is known for because it actually has a is known for something, and I'm trying to remember what, but it definitely mm -hmm. come across in like my research and stuff like that. So I'm trying to remember exactly what that particular region of Malaysia is known for. And like I said, I'm, I'm like Nick, if you'd ask me to point it out, because I actually had to look it up when those people were making requests. They were also, like I said, requesting music from around the world. So they were not always requesting music that I knew because it was from other parts of the world. But I do know that that particular uh, city is known for something and I can't remember what. So. If one of y'all can clarify that, uh, that would be great because, like I said, the mother folks may be trying to figure that as well because I've definitely heard the name Guadalajara. <laughs> Nick, we can't hear you. Yes, I think uh, he's. he's oh, yeah, my question oh. is do you have your own music style? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, in Malaysia, do you have your own music style? Uh, Malaysia is on the um, hot seat right now. So, does Malaysia yes. have its own music style? Uh, yes, definitely, definitely. They have different. Uh, they have own language, Malaya language. Uh, but their music, I can I can share with you. I think I think in this show, you want to listen Mal Malaysian Malaysian music. But yeah, one thing, like yeah, I don't if, know, you can, like, if you can, if you can figure out below there, there's a little share button, yeah. uh, share screen. Yes, yes, yes. You might be able to to do that yes. and share, share yes. the yes. Malaysian music. But, but in, in, in in Malaysia, basically, uh, like uh, there are lots of U.S. companies, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like like IBM, like yeah. uh, Google's, like yeah. Facebook, like uh, 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 many many tech companies. They do operations from Malaysia for mm -hmm. South Asia and Asia Pacific markets. So many, many big companies like Microsoft. Oh, the, the, okay, so the international companies 
have international companies basically uh, here they, they do their operations from from uh, different different uh, different countries right okay so the multinationals are down there multinationals yeah. are down there yeah. Yeah. also yeah. what is the big product the export i mean we uh, that what's the the big um export uh, they have they have natural resources uh like uh, oil and the petronas you're talking about last day twin tower okay. so petronas is one of the biggest company they have well and lot of natural resources that's why okay. many many chinese company and many many companies do their operations as well as tourism is the best best things in malaysia we got good beaches uh, yes yes we have good, uh, good, golf, good and, golf courses like Pine yeah, Yes, 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 yes. Even uh, like it's not far from my house. Uh, my house yeah. is in Subang Jaya, in condominium. So okay. there, there is a golf. Like I told you, that MIT doing their operations here. Right. Nisi, right. Malaysia uh, Institute of Supply Chain Innovations. So yeah. they are part, they are collaborate with uh, MIT. So okay. uh, their campus uh, in their campus side uh, in, in uh, so, Subang Jaya. Uh, uh, Mark, um, is that a What's the biggest concern in Malaysia? Is that like here? It's uh, of course a lot of stuff, definitely around the world. With the coronavirus here, outside the coronavirus, it's been race relations, it's been things around class, things of that nature. What is the big issue of concern there? I imagine there might be some environmental concerns, but what are some of the other big issues of concern in Malaysia? Mm. No, basically, I, uh, I I I share with uh, Mr. Nick in the last show. Basically, Malaysia control this coronavirus. Uh, I think uh, in, in Singapore, they spread a lot of corona patients, but Malaysia, uh, until today, they control. I think uh, uh, th 30 million people, 108 people died, right. and uh, they control it very well. Today, I think around 39 people affected. Okay, weather and government initiative and local people uh, take a lot of uh, responsibility. They are, I, I told you, they are peaceful and good. So now, now their biggest concern they want to start their operation they are trying to follow the sop okay they say the cmco or with the particulars guideline of world health organizations they, they start their operation business operations so now their biggest things is that and side by side uh, what i think as a researcher like example uh, well and uh, well and this kind of thing price go down so Malaysia have ha like Petronas and this kind of corporation, they have heavily depend on this kind of business. So mm, definitely it also creates some sort of impact. Uh, even they have uh, 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 other natural uh, resources and other things. Uh, they are trying to strongly working with China for COVID-19 vaccine and this kind of things. So they will export their natural resources to China. Okay, like the palm oil, they will export to China and they will bring vaccine to Malaysia. So this is the way government actually take a lot of initiative. For local people, I think 100% uh, uh, everything, uh, everywhere people is not happy. But uh, I, I, how I observe, they take a lot of good responsibilities and they take a lot of good initiatives. But that's why now it's controlled. But until or unless without vaccine we cannot say that it will be continued but malaysia tried the level best with a proper mechanism mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I, when we talked to reina um, several days ago we found out that malaysia with 30 million people big is bigger than new york bigger than california has 109 deaths in coronavirus they really controlled it really well where mark here yeah. it's just so out of control it's not funny mm -hmm. uh, so the, in australia where willie is down in melbourne mate uh you learn to speak australian you just go mate and then they they all recognize what you're saying mate okay they only have like about 100 deaths or 97 and they have 24 million people uh but australia's controlled it really well so has malaysia in the united states we're still out of control in India where Ankit is. I don't know what you, I know you guys went to lockdown. I didn't look at India, but what, what is your situation on the coronavirus Ankit? The situation is uh, PM addressed the nation yesterday. And uh, yep. so we are uh, starting a lockdown 4.0 uh, from 18th of May. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be a different lockdown because uh, some of the states are free from coronavirus. Some of them are in, are in orange zone where they yep. have some people quarantine or they have some uh, things going on, but, Cases are not spiking up, but some of the uh, major capitals of India, financial capital or uh, 
I mean, uh, capital of uh, India or maybe uh, industrial capital, those states are having problems. So they are in red zones. Yeah. So we might be having a different lockdown starting 18th of May. Also, uh, the uh, Prime Minister have uh, announced the stimulus of around uh, 300 billion dollars mm -hmm. uh, for the economic. Uh, uh, do, do, you, do, you, do you have that chart that you show on the coronavirus chart? Yeah, you yeah. If you, you can share it. And also, uh, what, uh, what we are doing is we are trying to uh, bring uh, the local uh, branch into global branch, and the, we wanted to make it vocal so that those local will become uh, global. Uh, while uh, because we are one point three billion, so if we if we start vocaling around, uh, yeah. we can create more global branch. So that is the uh, message from the prime minister. Yeah, yeah, we're we're so in doing that. Sorry, Joy and yeah, that, uh, Rain and Willie, are y'all in lockdown as well in India and Australia, or are you able to move yeah. around? 